In this lesson, we want to add some more product info. Specifically, we want to be able to display or conditionally render one element if our product is in stock and another element if our product is out of stock. So we'll add those elements now. We'll have a P tag that says in stock and a P tag that says out of stock. When we refresh, both elements will show up on the page, but we want one element to show up at a time based off of this new data, whether in stock is true or false. Up here we'll add the view directive, vif, and we're saying if in stock is true, display this first p tag, otherwise, or v else, display this second one. If we refresh, we see in stock because our data in stock is true. If we change that to false, however, we'll see out of stock. Pretty simple, but let's look at this deeper. It might help to imagine these conditional view directives of vf and velts a bit like windows. So when our data is true, that means vf evaluates to true, so we see in stock. But when our data is false, that means vf is no longer true, so that window stays shut and our second element displays instead. Conditional rendering can get more complex, and to demonstrate that, we're going to change out in stock to inventory and make it an integer. Up here, we can now say if inventory is greater than 10, show in stock, which it does because 100 is greater than 10. But what if we wanted to show something else, like almost sold out, if inventory was less than 10 but not yet zero? Well, we can use another conditional view directive called v else if. So in here, we'll type inventory is less than 10 and inventory is greater than zero. We refresh, we still see in stock, but let's change it to eight. Now we're seeing almost sold out. And when it's zero, we're seeing out of stock. So here we're chaining these view directives together to create even more complex conditional logic. You can imagine these conditional view directives like levels that can catch this ball if they evaluate to true. So since inventory is 100 and 100 is greater than 10, we stop here. But once it turns to eight, then we go down to the second level because eight is less than 10 and greater than zero. But once inventory turns to zero, then the ball falls down to the final level. Conditional rendering can also be less complex. So if I just want to render one element onto the page, like this p tag here, I can add a v if, if the expression in the quotes evaluates to a truthy value, and that element will display. It's important to note that v if will actually add or remove this element from the DOM. But if our application calls for an element to be displayed and not displayed very frequently, there's a more efficient view directive to use, and that's called vshow. Instead of inserting and removing the element over and over again, what vshow does is it just toggles the visibility off and on. So in this case, when our expression evaluates to false, then our element will be hidden. If we open up the dev tools, we can see that that element is still on the page. There's just a CSS property of display none added to it which is a more performant option than adding or removing this element from the DOM entirely. Time for the challenge. Add an onSale property to your data object, then use vif to display a span that says onSale whenever onSale is true. A link to the code playground is below. You can keep watching this series on YouTube, but if you want to track your progress and access other view courses, head on over to viewmastery.com. We release a new video every week. Plus, you can grab our free View Essentials cheat sheet. Thanks for watching.